So, yeah, I've just been, you know, talking to God, thinking and talking to God, and, you know, I've come to a realization that a lot of people don't understand that it's not okay to just say you know God, but it's very important for God to be able to say that he knows us as well. And one of the things is, you know, people feel like um, <clears throat> that just because his grace is sufficient, we can just be out here doing whatever we want to do. And that's not true. You know, um, it's not true. You know, God makes it very clear. Like, and, and Jesus says, like, if you love me, you will do my commandments. And when he says you will do my commandments, he's not just saying, you know, like the Ten Commandments. But he's talking about whatever he asks of us. Whatever he says for us to do. He's saying whatever he asks for us to do them and you know th that could be anything you know like even if it's just, I mean even though he says this in his word as well like you know love your neighbors and and he means that when he says this stuff he expects us to listen you know and and that's something you know people have a problem with it's like ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing but it's like you know if you're a parent and you tell your child go do this, go do that, you know, whether, you know, your son, like, go mow the grass, like, you're teaching him how to mow the grass for when he goes out into the world, and he has his own house, you know, how to maintain, you know, the grass, how to take care of it, or, you know, him, if he wants to be a gardener, or the woman is a gardener, like, like, there are instructions, there's order to doing these things, even just building a house. There is order, laying down the foundation. Like, people just think, like, you could just do whatever you want. No, there's order, there's instructions, or shall I say, there is directions that come with these things. And, you know, with God, he's very serious. Like, when he's sitting here saying, like, my children, like, when you come to me, like, and, and we come to him and we're serving him. Like, there's no time or room for, like, lukewarmness at all. And in order for, you know, God to be able to even be like, that's my child, I know them, you know, and to not reject them. Like he said, you know, there'll be people who come and they'll be like, but Lord, like, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast devils out? And Jesus will be like, I don't know you, you know, and, and the knowing comes with spending time in the secret place with him reading his word talking to him daily and not just about our wants and our needs and you know with our complaints you know the, our murmurings or you know our commands but it's coming and just talking to him building a relationship with him like a real relationship with him and you know like i said you know like intimacy Making time for God, turning off the TV, making time is important. Like you set aside time to go hang out with your friend, hang out with your spouse, you know, hang out with your parents, like whatever. It's the same thing with God. Like, God, I'm going to spend some time with you. I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to sit. I'm going to listen. I'm going to let you renew my mind. I'm going to be open to everything you say and believe that Jesus did all the things that he said, you know, and that are mentioned in the Bible, you know, because it, Jesus says, like, if you believe in the work that I've done, as scripture, you will do more. But if you're not spending time, how do you even know who you are? How do you even know, like, you know, when you're fighting, going back with and forth with the devil? Like, how do you fight? How do you overcome the oppression? How do you overcome? Because if I'm being real, you can't. You can't win. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's not even you who's fighting. It's the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? And it ain't really a fight if the Holy Spirit is, you know, even doing, like, intervening because he's the Holy Spirit. The devil can't take him on. It ain't no tussle. You know what I mean? It's, that ain't even what this is. But anyways, you know, um, 
Knowing God comes with loving him and respecting him as if you are in a relationship with somebody. Like when you love somebody, you, you know, things that you normally wouldn't do, you're going to do for them because they love you. They take care of you. They treat you right. They're there for you. They hold you. It's dying to yourself and carrying his cross. And, you know, for those who are lukewarm, it's not going to work. The Bible, the Holy Bible says, like, you cannot have two masters. Because one of them you're going to hate. And one of them you're going to commit to. And you can't be with Jesus and the world. Like, sorry. Not sorry. But you got to pick a side. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. If you are in love with the things of the world... I hate to break it to you, but your master knowingly or unknowingly is the devil. And I got a scripture for you guys as well. And uh, I'm in 1 John chapter 2 and verses 15. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him and the father is God. Then 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Then 17 says, And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of of God abides forever. Alright, so you really have to pick a side. There's no in-between with or without you know, grace, even though we all have grace, of course, but it's like, that's just what it is. And these are not my words. These, this is from the scriptures. Like, that's just what it is. You know, you can't like, it's not from God. The world is not of God. That's why he even goes on to say in the other scriptures where he's talking about like, he's already overcome the world. And he says that we are not of the world and the world will never like us. It'll hate us and it'll hate us. And I'm saying us as in God's children, because it's not of us. It don't know. It don't know us. Okay, and then here I'm going to go to uh, chapter 2 again in 1 John and read 5 through 8. And it says, but whoso keepeth his word, meaning all the things God says, all the things God's taught you, the Holy Bible, all the things that God has revealed to you. So he that keeps his word, the Lord, applying them to your life, not just hearing, but being doers of the word, you guys, because doing matters. Then it says in number six, he that says he abides in him ought himself also uh, also so to walk even as he walked. So that just goes back to sit into what I just said. Don't be just hearers, but be doers of the word. Once you learn these things of God, And his truth is revealed to you. Now you need to walk in those truths. Now you need to abide in his word. Become the word. Apply the word to your daily living. And then 7 says, Brethren, I write... I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Number eight. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Meaning, once you've been transformed by the renewing of your mind and you're being renewed by the word of God, by time spent with God, by allowing God to come and to clean you out, allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work after your yes. Then he's saying, uh, the darkness is, is now gone, you know, and, and the true light now will shine. Meaning, you know, the flesh is, is out the way. Now the Holy Spirit can show himself, you know, because it isn't about us being seen. It's about people seeing us and them seeing Jesus. That's what this is really about. And you guys, even if you flip to 2 Corinthians with me, chapter 4, verses 4, right? It says, in whom the God of this world, the world that the Lord told us not to, not to love, right? It says, in whom the God of this world, another story, it says, least the light of the glory 
of the glorious, oh, hold on, let me read it over. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them, which believe it's not least the light of the glorious gospel of God, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And I just want to read that part again. You know, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. Okay? The gospel, the good news of Christ. Right? And then it says, Christ who is the image of God. It says, should shine unto them. And that just goes back to when I said, you know, people shouldn't see us. If we are children of God, they should see Jesus. Because we too are in the image of God. And not only are we looking like him, but, you know, we are, we are walking like him. We laid our lives down for him. There is no excuse. Purity, sanctification, and holiness, all of that matters. All of it does. We can't be dibbling and dabbling one foot in while the other foot out. This ain't that kind of So you guys, I just want a few scriptures up. And check this out, okay? Let's talk about deliverance for a second. So in 2, I just read 4, uh, verse 4, but now we're going to do 4, 2. It says, but have renounced right when I'm talking about the oppression when I'm talking about blinded we're blinded but listen when you start to renounce and you start to get deliverance the, listen to this but the renounce of hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully meaning living in his truth Living in the true meaning of the content of what he said and how he said it. Then it says, but by manifestation, okay, of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's con conscious in sight, in the sight of God. Yeah, this is powerful. We just took the time to read the Bible. There is freedom and liberty in truth. So be real with yourself. You can't be one foot in and one foot out. You have to fully give your life over. Which is why I've already been saying we've been seeing the changing of the guard. The Saul's rising up. and I mean falling down and then the David's rising up. You know the exposing the gatekeepers are switching, like the ecclesias are rising, the remnant is rising, like, I mean, come on. A lot is going on in the earth right now, you guys. And this is so powerful. And you know, it's for, you know, not even, you know, it's because of the love of God you know the mercy of God that he's taking his time and he's helping other people get together by preparing other people who will go forth and to you know uh, speak the truth you know break the yokes off of the necks because where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty you know and so I'm just saying all this that with all the grace we get all the love we get all his kindness you know, to love a person, we have to show them that we love them. And I'm not saying we're going to be perfect, you know, but I am saying if you dedicate your life to God for real, and you can say like, I know God and God, like you might not even have to say a word because you're so empty of yourself that he just floods or like it's just an overflow in the atmosphere because you showed up. You know, but it takes a real, real, real sanctification. And what is sanctification? Separation. Separate yourself. Let the Lord consecrate you. Let the world, you know, let the Lord strip you of the world and put his truth in you. You know, letting his glory shine among you. You know how it says like when Moses went up to the mountain and then he came down, like the countenance, like you know, his face changed because he was in the presence of the Lord. And that's important. You get that when you really have a relationship with God. Because you really love God. Like, really.
You know, because if we're being honest, didn't he lay his life down for us? Isn't that why we're like, oh my God, he loves me so much? Because he went on the cross for us, giving himself us up, giving himself up for us. And we can't do the same. I mean, you know, truth of the matter is, there's no in between. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. That's just what it is. It is no other way. And with the seasons we're in, there's no time to play games. You don't have time to be like, you know, um, I'm going to hang out with the devil because I'm still in love with the world. Like, nah. It's time to get serious about our father's business. Because Satan's children out here ain't, ain't wasting no time. I mean, we can see them. They're everywhere. I mean, they manifesting in people. We, we ain't even know at one point because our eyes were shut. But the scales are off. See. See. You know, we, we can see where he's at, who he's with. I mean, if you've been spending time with God, then you, you see. You see. Let me go ahead anyways and read John 15 verses 18. I'm starting. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you. He has chosen us, you guys. So he says, chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have prosecuted me, they will also prosecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And I just want to close out on that, you know, so because it is, you know, pick a side. Either you're with the Lord or you're not. That's it. Ain't no way around it. Um, other than that, you guys, I hope this word and this truth and revelation, you know, gets into your heart. And I pray you guys water it. And that you guys let the Lord use you. Because he's calling his. He is. Other than that, you guys, have a beautiful and blessed night. Bye.